Hello everyone and welcome to a very exciting game from round 9 of the 2013 Candidates Tournament. It's a game between Peter Swidler and Alexander Grishuk. Now when I was deciding which games to show from round 9, uh, I really I really didn't know how to decide because they're all really really excellent. Uh, so I decided to show all of them and this is the game uh, that we're gonna start. Uh, with because uh, in my opinion, it's uh, the most exciting game and it could very well be the most exciting game uh, of the entire tournament But we still have a couple, you know, couple of rounds to go uh, Definitely room for negotiations there and before we actually see this game We do have unfortunately only one photo and it's a photo of uh, Peter Swidler uh, showing something to John Sanders um, uh, We don't have any more photos before the game and uh, if you're interested, interested, feel free to pause the video here and uh, try to figure out what is it that uh, Peter Swidler could be showing John Saunders uh, that would interest him so much. Uh, so yeah, and we do have another photo of Grishuk, but that's from the press conference after the game. Not a lot of players made it to the press conference in round 9 uh, as they did have to take uh, drug tests. Uh, so let's see this game. Uh, Swidler has the white pieces and he opens with d4. Uh, we have knight to f6 and c4. Uh, let me just uh, take care of that sound. Yeah, okay, I always forget that. Uh, g6, so the king's Indian defense, knight to c3, bishop to g7, e4, d6, and uh, like in his game against Rajabov, we have f3, the Semish variation of the king's Indian defense. Uh, we have castles, bishop to e3, c5, uh, knight to g2, e2, knight to c6, d5, uh, we have knight to e5, uh, this is all very standard, knight to g3, now h5, preparing h4 to kick away the knight, bishop to e2, uh, Grishuk does push h4, knight to f1, and e6. Uh, we have f4, and uh, this is the critical moment uh, in the game. So, uh, here, probably you want to play something like knight e to g4, as your knight is attacked, uh, you want to attack uh, white's dark square bishop here, and here uh, white will decide either either he will move the bishop or he will decide to give up his light square bishop. Either way, you're, uh, you're, winning, uh, you're winning the bishop pair here. Uh, but this is what Grishchuk prepared. Uh, in this position, Grishchuk did not uh, move the knight back or, or even go knight to g4. Uh, instead, he prepared knight captures on c4. And uh, it's, um, I mean, this is, uh, when you see a move like this, uh, this is basically a slap in the face. As this move, this position was uh, on the board many times by many players. Uh, and it, it's the first time anyone ever played knight captures on c4. Maybe not the first time, but first time in, in serious Grandmaster uh, competition. And... Uh, I believe it was uh, Gary Kasparov who said after this game that during the 90s uh, he did consider this knight captures on c4 move, but he never actually played it. Uh, so, okay, bishop captures on c4, there's really no better move to, to make here, and now comes b5, and uh, uh, already white has to make, uh, make a decision. Uh, does he want to grab more material? For now, he has a piece for a pawn. Does he want to, does he want to grab another pawn? Uh, you know, if you're ahead in material, in, in, you don't really want too much material if you don't have to take it. Uh, but here, if you move... If you move back, then b4 is coming, then your knight gets misplaced, and then the e4 pawn, you lose that as well. And now uh, black has two pawns for the piece, and it, you can't really even call this a sacrifice. Black black, black is probably even better here. Uh, so after this b5, we have, as knight is guarding the e4 pawn, bishop captures on b5, and e captures on d5. Uh, we have e5. Uh, and uh, d captures on e5. You you could push d4 immediately, but uh, first d captures on e5, getting rid of your double pawn, and d4 is always a threat. Uh, we have f captures on e5, and now bishop to g4. So uh, for Grishchuk, who really came prepared into this game, uh, this is nothing new to him. He he had this position on the board in his home preparation. Uh, he had bishop g4 attacking the queen, and now it's up to Swidler, uh, who, who who sees this position for the first time to figure out what he wants to do here and uh, how to handle this position. Now, your queen is attacked. You probably want to do something about that. So so how do you, how do you do it? Uh, well, there are there are many different ideas here. For example, uh, if you go queen to d2, then black can always simply push d4, attack your knight, attack your bishop, uh, and after you capture, black can capture, and with your king stuck on e1, this bishop is slicing all the way here, you can't run away with the king, uh, you can't uh, develop this knight, the queen is blocking it, the bishop is blocking it, uh, you can develop it to g3, the h-pawn is blocking it, uh, black, 
maybe maybe an engine could withstand this attack, but but no human over the board while the clock is ticking could. Uh, so definitely not something you want to do. Uh, after bishop to g4, you could consider queen a4 with the idea of maybe capturing the knight and then queen captures bishop. Uh, but then again, simply d4. And after e captures, bishop captures, uh, let's say knight to e4, you attack the bishop. Now h3, black would be merciless here. Uh, queen to a6 with a double attack on the bishop on f6. Now comes uh, pawn captures on g2. Uh, knight to f6 check, king moves, and now rook to g1. Pawn captures on f1 with check, rook captures, now d captures on e3. And uh, how do you how do you defend this with with, uh, with white? Bishop is still slicing all the way here. The pawn is uh, <laughs> eyeing d, d, d2 and f2 squares. Uh, queen, to d, uh, queen to d2 is a terrible threat. This would be checkmate. So... To even consider going into this variation, you would have to you would have to find this super engine defense with bishop to d7, uh, blocking the queen and uh, allowing allowing the king to maybe escape. Uh, now black can either either grab the piece or black can continue the attack with rook to b8. Uh, but either way, white would not have white wouldn't enjoy himself here. So after this bishop to g4, Swedler didn't really feel like going back. So instead. Swidler, Swidler played a, a move that I'm sure shocked Grishuk, as uh, this is uh, the first time Grishuk even saw this move. He had this position on the board, uh, but the move Swidler played, uh, Grishuk hasn't even considered. And it's one of those moves uh, that the engine doesn't like. The engine doesn't even recommend this move, but once you play it, the engine actually really likes it. So, what do you think Swidler played here? And deep down, I'm sure you all know what Swidler played here. Uh, it's it's nothing for you to pause the video and find it. I'm just going to show it to you uh, here. Swidler played e captures on f6, so he grabbed that pawn. Uh, <laughs> he grabbed that knight, and uh, uh, well, while while grabbing it, he actually removed the defender of the bishop on g4. So now actually, queen captures on g4 would also be a threat. Uh, but uh, on the other hand, uh, Swidler is also offering his queen on d1. So what do you do here? There's really no better move than to capture the queen. So bishop captures on d1. Now we have f captures on g7, threatening g captures on f8 with check. Uh, king captures on g7, and now bishop captures on c5. Uh, you, uh, it'd be great. You already have three pieces for the queen. It'd be great if you could grab another one, but unfortunately you can't. Uh, if you play king captures, then you get the d4. Black gets uh, one piece back. And uh, on the other hand, uh, even if you play knight captures on d1, now d4 will not grab the knight and the bishop. Uh, now queen to a5 check is coming. Now your bishop is under attack, you're also in check. If you move the king, you lose the bishop. And if you play knight to c3 back to guard the bishop, then d4 is coming and black w uh, yet again wins the piece. So uh, you cannot grab another piece here. So uh, bishop captures on c5 first. Uh, we have h3. Now threatening h captures on g2, and now comes rook captures on d1. Uh, there's no good way to react to this h pawn. If you play something like this, uh, then bishop to f3 will be deadly. Now your rook is under attack once you prevent this. Uh, queen to h4 check is coming. The bishop is still slicing all the way here. Uh, after we block this, uh, then comes rook to c8, and there is uh, there's really there's really no way to imagine white could survive this attack rook, a, uh, rook is coming to e8 uh black <clears throat> black might even give up uh, the exchange here to continue th this attack so after h3 rook captures on d1 it's much uh, much more important to grab that bishop uh, we have pawn captures on g2 uh, rook to g1 and now pawn captures on f1 uh, temporarily there are two black queens on the board uh, but of course king captures uh, queen to h4 uh, attacking the h2 pawn and now rook to g2 defending the pawn uh, rook f to d8 and now rook to d4 uh, not allowing this pawn to be pushed and also attacking the queen uh, you don't really you don't really have an option of grabbing even more material here with rook captures because after rook captures knight captures uh, then your king is well pretty naked on f1 and there are two uh, three undefended pieces here the, the the two bishops and the knight and it would be too easy for the black queen to pick to pick up at least one of those pieces for example rook to c8 attacking the bishop uh, if you move the bishop then rook to c1 will be very dangerous so you do have to block this but now comes queen to e4 
uh, you attack the knight and there's really no good square for the knight. If you move the knight to e3, then rook captures, re simply removing the defender of the knight. Uh, and if you play something like uh, rook to d2 to defend it, then comes rook captures on c5. Yet again, pawn captures and now queen to b1 check. Uh, will pick up the bishop here after the king moves king f2 queen captures on b5 and now the queen uh, will be will be stronger than rook and the knight so after this rook f to d8 uh, we have rook to d4 attacking the queen queen to h5 and now rook to f4 uh, here we have d4 uh, if, if you if you played something like rook a to c8 uh, then you'd get bishop to d4 check, king moves, and then after h4, it's uh, it's uh, very hard to decide what to do with this queen. I mean, you you have a queen for three pieces, but the queen is not very active. Uh, here, bishop to e2. E2 is coming, then the queen doesn't really have a good square. Uh, the queen would have to go back, and uh, I mean, the, it would be a, a really passive position for Grishuk. So after this rook to f4 move, uh, he decided to play d4. So we have bishop captures on d4 with check, and here uh, he decides to give up the exchange. Rook captures on d4, rook captures on d4, and now rook to b8, attacking the bishop. Uh, a4, uh, defending the bishop, and now uh, immediately queen to f3 doesn't give you anything. f3 block, queen h1 check, king moves. Uh, there's really no good way to continue this. Uh, so first, after this a4 move, uh, Grishuk decides to play a6. Now, this bishop has to move, and then rook captures on b2 will definitely be an idea. So, bishop captures on a6. We have queen to f3 check, rook to f2, now queen to h1 check. Uh, king to f2, uh, king to e2, and now, since the bishop is no longer blocking the b-file, rook captures on b2 with check. Uh, rook to d2 blocking, and now queen to c1. Uh, if you captured here, rook captures, then it's a queen against a rook, knight, and the bishop. Uh, white is definitely better here. It's hard to say if white could pull it off, but probably white would would win this. So after rook to d2, uh, here comes queen to c1. Now, of course, uh, you don't want to capture. Here, if you capture, then queen captures, and uh, your knight is under attack, you're under check, and there's no way to defend it. If you play king d3, then you lose the rook. So you'd, you're going to lose a knight here. So after queen to c1, we have uh, king to d3. Now, the two rooks are attacking the rook on b2. Uh, we have rook to b6 attacking the bishop and the bishop to c4. So as you can see, uh, now it's a bishop, knight and the rook against the queen, uh, but the king is on d3. It's, it's hard to say uh, which side can do anything here. Uh, rook to d6 check. Uh, we have bishop to d5 blocking, rook to d7 and now rook to f4. Uh, we have f5, rook to d4, and king to h6. Uh, h4, rook to c7, uh, knight, uh, bishop to c4, blocking the attack uh, on the knight, queen to f1 check, uh, we have rook to e2, and now comes f4. The threat, of course, is f3, this will attack the pin piece, and if black is able to... Uh, to make this happen, then white will of course be lost. Uh, so king to c2, uh, this is move 41, so time control has been reached, and here in this position uh, Grishuk played f3, and it was in this position that the players agreed to a draw. Uh, seems like uh, like uh, too early in the game to actually agree for a draw, but um, but it was uh, such a wild game, and you know, both of them <laughs> thought that, oh man, I'm gonna lose this, I'm gonna win this, I'm gonna lose this. And now you have this F3 move, Grishchuk offers a draw, and uh, Svidler accepts the draw. Uh, yeah, it seems maybe maybe premature, but not really. As uh, the rook is under attack, you do have to move it. And then you realize, okay, the rook is attacking the bishop, and if I move the rook, then the queen will also be attacking the bishop. So, obviously, my only move is rook to e4, so both of my rooks are guarding this bishop. Then, of course, you see queen g2 check, king moves, you're making room for the f-pawn, you push the f-pawn, and now, of course, white has to prevent you from promoting the pawn to a queen. This is uh, done by rook to f4. Uh, and now comes rook captures on c4, removing the defender of the f1 square. Uh, rook captures, and now you promote your pawn to a queen. Rook captures, queen captures. So this is uh, the position both Sviller and uh, Grishuk saw uh, when they agreed to a draw in that position. And here uh, it's it's a rook, a knight, and a, and a, and a passed a pawn against a queen. Uh, but the king is bare on, on, on b3, and there is no way to escape checks from the black queen. 
So even if you tried to win this with white, uh, let's say you push the pawn, the queen will simply position herself, and after you start, uh, you know, es escorting the pawn, uh, it will be impossible to stop all the checks. For example, queen f8 check, you block, uh, queen back to a fourth check, king moves forward, uh, queen to b8 check, king moves back, then comes queen f4 again, uh, queen, uh, king to b3, again you go queen to b8 check, and if you try something like uh, king to a3, now again queen to f4, not allowing king to go any further, and here, uh, if you if you try to push the pawn, then comes queen d6, uh, pinning the rook and also attacking the pawn. You have to defend it, king here, and then queen captures, you lose the pass pawn, and now it's 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 a clear draw, or, or maybe black can even, uh, you know, uh, trick white into winning this. But okay, uh, after this uh, f, no, even before this, uh, after f3 was played, uh, yeah, uh, in this position, the players agreed to a draw, and uh, I mean, what a draw it was. So uh, I really, I really wanted to show you this game because a lot of you might not even see it because uh, uh, you know when you see a result as a draw, then you're you're not even interested in checking the game. Uh, but I mean, what a game! First, that prepared sacrifice knight captures on c4 by Grishuk, and then uh, <laughs> Svidler countering it here uh, with uh, with e captures on f6. That's simply amazing. Uh, wh what a move that was. So yeah, uh, I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Dirk Engling, uh, Danny McCullough, David Guzman Ruiz, and Honza Vorel for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. Uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Uh, thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon uh, with uh, with another nice video from round nine of the 2013 Candidates Tournament. Thank you all, and uh, I'll see you soon.